It's time to wake up with a nice cup of morning roast. Featuring the Fillmore's finest, Monte Hill. <laughs> the pride of the Excelsior, Joe Butcher Boy Shasky. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, the morning roast. Oh, baby, oh, baby. 50 Cent Friday here on The Roast. Got Alan Styles, Style Files, in for Joe Shasky the Butcher. He'll be back on Monday, but you better believe he's listening right now. Shasky, how you doing this morning? Hope you're doing well. See you Sunday at the Dolphins Niners game. Uh, oh, Jerry man. Rice, Monday, 8.30. We're releasing new gear on, oh, at 3 o'clock. You can find it out on 95.70 Game. Find out about it at 95.70 Game. El Sleepy Floyd. El Sleepy Floyd. Shout out to El Sleepy Floyd, who designed some great, great T-shirts for us. So uh, that'll be released at 3 o'clock, 9570gameshop.com, 9570gameshop.com. Talk some Warriors. We'll get back into Warriors at some point. Warriors Bulls tonight at Chase Center. Big big three-game homestand for them. Mm-hmm. Then we got a big one at Levi's. Oh, we're still on Allen. I mean, not Allen, but Aaron Judge watch. Whether or not he signs today. Mm-hmm. It's but not ending. It's, it's not, not ending. It should be heating up, actually. It should be done by the end of the week, right? According yeah. to Bubba, a.k.a. J.P. Morosi. But let's go down to Miami. Down to Miami, host of the Joe Rose Show on WQAM in Miami. It is Joe Rose himself, tight end, former tight end with the Miami Dolphins. But I didn't know, Joe, that you had caught the game when he passed at the 79 big game to help the Cal Bears beat Stanford. How about that? Man, that was a long, long time ago. But, yeah, I, I was, uh, well, I'm, I'm immature now, but I was really bad back then. But, yeah, that was fun. That, that was fun. Listen, the Cal Stanford game, nobody back here talked about it. But, uh, yeah, it was uh it well, was fun. For well, your sure. Bears, that was a good time. Yeah, the Bears won the axe this year. It was a saving grace to a rough season. Our producer, Sam Love, is a big Cal guy. He's going to Cal UCLA games the day after Thanksgiving in front of 50 people. I mean, my guy needs some hope here. But he's also a Miami Hurricane fan, so he's sad as well. So forget my producer anyway. The Dolphins, they have been sad in recent memory. However, Mike McDaniel gets hired. Uh, you replace him with Brian, uh, replace him, uh, replace Brian Flores with Mike McDaniel. You still stick with Tua. You make the big move to get Tyreek Hill. And as you can know, you guys are eight and three. So this Dolphins team has taken everybody by storm. What was your expectations coming into the season with the new head coach, with Tua Tagovailoa at quarterback and this Dolphins roster? So Mike McDaniel had one interview, as you guys probably know. So we didn't know much about him. We knew he's a offensive coordinator for the 49ers, but we know he didn't call the plays. Shanahan calls the plays. So we, we really didn't know. We got this guy. We, we all meet him. You know, everybody shows up for that first press conference and who's going to run this team and what's the plan here. And, uh, only interview he had for a head coaching job was the Miami Dolphins. And they have absolutely hit a, a jackpot. You talk about a guy prepared, has given Coach Shanahan a lot of credit and his father for what he's been able to do. But the story has just been, Unbelievable. The rehabilitation of Tua Tunga Vailoa, who's been beaten up, um, lack of confidence, uh, coaching staff, uh, maybe a front office that no longer believed in him. And Mike came in, took a look, watched everything, said, Hey, we're going to get more around you. And we're going to put in a system that you're absolutely going to love that's going to work for you and absolutely get the best out of you since you've been at Alabama. And, uh, he did. They go out, as you mentioned, the Tyree Kill um, trade that took place was fantastic. That guy has been everything and more. Uh, has been durable, makes big plays. And then the other thing I got to tell you, man, we caught the San Francisco truth. Bringing in about uh, four guys from his own team, including yeah. the Wilson trade and uh, Mostert, Raheem Mostert coming here. Uh, so we had two guys that knew how to run. Uh, that running game that, that the 49ers run that he really likes, the white spread. And uh, and then on top of it, Surefield has turned into a sure thing. At third, mm-hmm. wide receiver has been great. And uh, and then Craycraft, who is a practice squad guy with the 49ers, yeah. has also turned into a really solid, tough, little hard-nosed receiver coming off a game of four or five catches. So um, he just got the guys he wanted, knew what he wanted, rehabbed a couple of guys that he thought could play, got their confidence back, and and here we are at the 8-3, one of the best offenses 
in the football and uh, and now get ready for three really tough road games. Mm-hmm. It's not just San Francisco. We're going from uh, San Francisco down to L.A., play the Chargers, and then we get to come back and play the Buffalo Bills. So yep. <laughs> it, it's going to be a tough little stretch of, uh, of football coming up against a really good 49er team, a team that Mike McDaniel knows really well. So I think we're all looking forward to, to getting the big test. And you go from the Texans to the 49ers, uh, you're going up the elevator uh, a little bit there. Joe, you know, just like you said, everything – with Mike McDaniel when he comes in and the culture has just been changed immediately. And it's funny because in these situations, specifically in the NFL, I mean, expectations can flip immediately. So what are the expectations down in Miami? What, what looks like a, what would be a successful season? Is it just making it to the playoffs? Are, are you, if you get through this stretch two and one, is it time to think about Super Bowl? What, what do you think expectations are for a successful season? Well, you're sounding like a morning show in South Florida right there. <laughs> uh, no, it's a great one. I don't know if you guys know this, but how you doing? We're one of the uh, – we're second in the NFL since the, the longest streak of not winning a playoff game. Only the Lions are worse, to give you an idea how long it's been. Has it been that so, long? What, what's, the last time, what, what's the last time you guys won? I'm trying to think it's back. It's been 21 or 22 years since the Miami Dolphins have won a playoff game. Just wow. to give you an idea how bad. Because wow. most people are going, like you guys, going, wow, it's been that long? So, so we haven't had a playoff win. So for me, it would be to, to win a playoff game. And listen, the Bills are playing great again. Everybody was worried about the Bills, and they were done. And Josh Allen, now they've won three in a row. Uh, that's going to be a tough one to overtake. we got to go up there and play them in a couple of weeks. So for me, get in the playoffs and win a playoff football game w- would be a great start until I see that. Listen, we haven't played in a Super Bowl since I played in Super Bowl 19 against the 49ers with Montana and Marino. So I, I know, you know, you don't just say, hey, we're going to the Super Bowl. And I, I try to calm some of the fan base down a little bit. Like, look, it, that's a big jump from never making the playoffs and, yeah. and never win a playoff game to all of a sudden you're going to win a Super Bowl. That's, that's not going to be easy. Joe Rose. Of course, you can listen to the Joe Rose Show on 560 WQAM on Odyssey app. Former member of the Miami Dolphins, former Cal Bear, now calling games for the Miami Dolphins, color analyst for the Dolphins as they come out here to the West Coast. And as you mentioned, Joe, three straight road games. We're looking at the schedule earlier today saying, boy, Miami's got some tough stretches here. But when you look at the quarterback, you look at Tyreek Hill, what about that defense? Because nobody's talking about that matchup. Shanahan against that Dolphins defense. Jimmy Garoppolo's a full goal. Christian McCaffrey's going to play. You have Debo Samuel, Brendan Ayuk, and George Kittle. Who should we who should we be focused on on that Miami Dolphins defense who could wreck a game? Well, I will tell you one thing. Um, I'm guessing Mike McDaniel has spent a lot of time in that defensive uh, with Coach Boyer, the defensive coordinator, going over things because nobody knows the 49ers better, offense better than uh, Mike McDaniel, but it it hasn't been as good, to be honest. Last year we had a great run where we really played lights out, and this year they're about in the middle of the pack and and, uh, talking to some of the guys. The biggest thing is we just aren't getting the amount of takeaways that we were able to get last year. Guys would move the ball, but we get takeaways. You get interceptions. And so it's been disappointing. We've got a lot of guys with great names. You, you look across and you go, wow, that guy's a good player. we got some guys individually that have played well, but the numbers just haven't been there. The, the sacks number hasn't been there. The takeaways for the defense hasn't been there. Um, so, I mean, Xavier Howard doesn't have an interception. The guy's been an interception machine at, at wow. the cover corner position. Wow. So our, our, our numbers are, are way down. I think that's been – the biggest disappointment, but but all the names are there. The Jalen Phillips is there. The Bradley Chubb that was made uh, from the Denver Broncos on the trade deadline right before it was over. Um, you got Javon Holland, who's just been an outstanding safety, a big, strong guy, can really run. We just got to get more because you'll look at their stats and go, eh, I don't see it. But um, a lot of those guys had really good seasons, and, and uh, if we're going to have a chance in this thing, Listen, I'm not sure about blocking Nick Bosa, to be really honest, especially <laughs> if we have to play a backup tackle. Yeah. Um, 
I've seen him since uh, he was about 14 years old play at the highest level at one of the best high schools in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a tough one. He, uh, he is something else, man. He is special, and he can destroy games. And, and I know that's been a, a, a priority to, to see where that's, that's where we're going to be on that one. But we, uh, we got to get some guys playing like that. We got to get some, some guys that can dominate games one on one. And, and uh, the 49ers have a couple of those guys, including a guy in the middle playing linebacker. And, uh, and that's the difference. Re- really, when I look at it, the impact guys that the 49ers have had that play like the best players at their position, and we got to get some guys playing like that down the stretch here. Joe, I know you're familiar with the Bay Area. We got a guy who, who's under center for us in Jimmy G who's quite polarizing. You got to be on one side of the fence or the other in terms of whether, you know, you think that guy can get it done or not. Tua is another quarterback who, you know, he was beaten down early. People didn't know if he could make it in this league. Do you think at this point Tua is still a bit underrated in, to the outside view, or do you think he's starting to get the respect he deserves? And could this game maybe help yeah. to, to get more of that respect? Well, so, so it's a great question, by the way, and I think Tua and, and Jimmy Garoppolo uh, really are, are in the same thing. Everybody kind of gave up on Jimmy Garoppolo, put him on the other field to work out on his own until everybody needed him, and all he does is come back and throw 16 touchdowns to four interceptions, and the team loves him. It looks to me like the players love playing with Jimmy. They, they want to go out and play with Jimmy G. So um, I'm seeing that from Tua, the big turnaround with the players, started kind of with Tyree Kill going, man, you guys got to stop. This dude, this dude puts it right on the money, man. It's a nice pass to catch. And, and so we started seeing more and more of that. Now I see it in the hotel, man. It is, it is his team. Guys like hanging with him. Guys want to be around him. So I, I think he's really starting to win over this team. Yeah, he's got to play. Listen, he's playing against the number one defense. You know, anybody can beat the Texans up. I know I've already heard this. Right. They beat the Texans up or the Cleveland Browns up. <laughs> now you're playing the 49ers. And it's going to be loud, by the way, because San Francisco 49ers fans get after it pretty good. So, so it's a it's a it's a different step up. But these are the games. If if we're really going to be a playoff team, these next three weeks we got to play like it. So that five game winning streak, it's great, and it set us up to make the playoffs. But now we're going to play a lot of the big boys here, and uh, and we'll find out just how good we are starting with uh, with the San Francisco 49ers. And as you mentioned, that schedule. The rest of the way is, is not an easy one. No, no doubt about that, Joe. We got to run in just a second here. But quickly, uh, how bad does McDaniel, Mostert, Wilson Jr. want this game? Trent Sherfield, River Craycraft, how bad do they want this one? Because there's been some uh, chirping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raheem, Raheem, you know, Raheem Mostert is one of the, the nicest human beings. You yep. know, here's the guy. We, we get your two running backs, and, <laughs> and listen, they've both been – Really good, you know. I mean, these guys have been really, really good, and uh, and they're looking around at the speed on the outside of. And, and this thing starts with Waddle and Tyree Kill on the outside. It it sounds like a track meet when you. It, it sounds like uh, you look at these two, but but they are the total package of what everybody says they are. Uh, and so I think sometimes everybody goes, "Yeah, look at what I got on the outside. Let's go play right now. I got Tyree on one side." And Jalen Waddle on the other. Let's let's go play. We we can play against you. And so yeah, there's there's a lot of confidence. And and I know Raheem. I'm sure you guys got the comments. Raheem. Oh yeah. Everybody thought he was taking shots at Jimmy G. And he's like, no, no, I like Jimmy G, man. But <laughs> but our team's really good. And and I'm just excited. But hey, I can't wait to see everybody. And I'm like, oh. We don't need anybody any more fired up with no. the 49ers, man, for, uh, for this game, for sure. Hey, hey, Joe, thanks for the time. Safe travels to the Bay Area. I know it's a big three-game stretch for you guys. It all starts Sunday in a highly anticipated matchup. 49er fans are jacked up for this one. Dolphins, Niners, Levi Stadium. It's going to be a fun one. Joe, thanks for the time today. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for having me. Anytime. Joe Rose of the Joe Rose Show on WQAM in Miami. You can listen to that on the Odyssey app. 560 WQAM on the Odyssey app. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Rose, former tight end of the Dolphins, call the games for them.